And we welcome you back to On the Beat. Isaac hosting again this week. This week's topic is mental health with uh, involving children. And I have with me today Chanel Barnes from Baptist uh, Medical Group Columbus Children's Clinic. And uh, Chanel, we sure appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you for having us. All right, tell us a little bit about kind of your background and sort of your specialty. What do you practice exactly? Okay, so um, I'm a pediatric mental health specialist, but I am also a certified pediatric nurse practitioner in primary care. Um, where we take care of all the way from newborns to adolescents. All right, so good uh, baseline there and kind of getting a little bit more uh, in depth here with mental health and children. So uh, back to school season is, is upon us. Right. And so school performance, we want to get started on the right foot mm -hmm. and we want to get going on the right foot. So how does mental health kind of play into that from a child's perspective? So really just understanding what mental health is because mental health involves mental behavior and your child's emotional well-being. So children who display healthy mental health, they're resilient, they show self-control, um, and they just have a better outlook on life. But on the other hand, there's children who may have mental health disorders. And there you'll have trouble with learning, uh, problems with self-regulation. Um, just complex, normal day-to-day -day routine is more complex for them. Okay. And so um, you'll notice teachers, parents will be more concerned about their child behavior. All right, and so when should, let's say, a parent sort of be concerned, hey, this is maybe not uh, normal child behavior. Um, what, what's kind of a red flag or when should I be more concerned? So when their behavior and performance is impairing their day-to-day -day routine, Okay. Structure is very, very difficult for them to follow. Okay. That's one of the main red flags. All right, and going on here to uh, kind of a little bit more uh, about uh, in the school setting, um, they have a trouble maybe learning, uh, kind of falling behind the other kids per se, and um, this is causing a concern of parents and, and maybe teachers as well. When does, they, when does a parent contact the healthcare provider rather than try to settle it with the teacher? Because I feel like that might be a, a first option, hey, go to the teacher first, but teacher's not a medical professional, of course. Correct. And sometimes things can coexist. Okay. So behavior can, if you can be acting out because maybe you're having trouble with reading. Okay. And maybe you don't want to read. Or maybe, you know, you notice that your friends are moving ahead and you're struggling. So you begin to display, you begin to act out. And studying and wanting to read, it's easier to just be maybe put to the back of the class and not okay. being told to read the book. All right. So just signs that will get them um, maybe um, in school suspension or out of school because in this continuous, this is when you're like, well, maybe they may be an underlying problem. Sure. So it's more of a, if it builds um, instead of it just being kind of a, a one-off incident. Definitely so. Okay. All right. Next question here. Um, as a parent, how can we kind of, pre not prevent it, but sort of prevent it from going that far? How can we kind of be proactive instead of reactive? So you want to very much so be a part of your child's education as well as you are with their health care. So making sure your children are doing uh, things such as as simple as eating, exercising, getting enough sleep, um, ha having a safe environment, feeling free to come and talk to you about their concerns, um, making sure you have a structure and routine at home. Those are some proactive things that we ask parents to also sure. look out for. Absolutely. And we said sleep. I know as adults, it's what, six to eight hours or roughly that. Mm -hmm. uh, what about a child or adolescent? Uh, what is the required or suggested sleep? Okay. So a child six to 12 years old should get at least nine to 12 hours of sleep. Okay. And then your adolescent, you need at least eight to 10 hours of sleep. All right. Well, that's mm -hmm. good information there, Ms. Barnes. We sure appreciate you joining us uh, and spending a little bit of your busy schedule yes. uh, with us this morning. Thank you so much. All right. You bet. Mm -hmm. If you have any additional uh, questions, uh, the information there is listed on the screen. You can also find more at the website. We'll be right back.